There's an interesting story that probably you've never heard. I talked about it maybe once or twice in, in, uh, on shows, but I think it bears repeating now. <clears throat> if you go back to a book today, which is you can still find in libraries and you can still buy it in the, in the bookstores today, <clears throat> the book is called The Theogony of Hesiod. The Theogony is T-H-E-O-G-O-N-Y, Theogony of Hesiod, which is spelled H-E-S-I-O-D. The Theogony of Hesiod is a very thick book that you can find in the libraries or order it uh, if you wish. You can still get it today. Uh, Hesiod was supposedly an illiterate herdsman living back about 700 B.C., uh, in ancient, the ancient Grecian Empire under the ancient Greeks. And according to Hesiod, who was an illiterate herdsman, he was, he said that in his book, The Theogony, he said that one night while he was out looking over and watching over his, uh, his sheep, uh, that three angels, three separate angels were glowing uh, a glowing angels, they floated up to him. He said they didn't walk up to him. It was as they floated in the air up to him. And they called themselves, they referred, they told them, they told Hesiod <clears throat> that they referred to themselves as muses. M-U-S-E-S, muses. From which we get the word today, museum or music. Amusement, M-U-S-E, muses were the three angels that appeared to Hesiod, uh, 700 B.C. They said that they talked to, uh, Hesiod said that they talked to uh, him telepathically. And they told him, the three angels said that they wanted him to write a book about the gods that rule over our heaven. Not the whole universe, but the gods that ruled over us, we humans, in our heavens. And so he told them that he was illiterate and couldn't read or write. And they said that's that would be fine because they would uh, do something that they would call uh, channeling. And they would overshadow him and he would just put the uh, pen to the paper and they will write it for him. So they told him, don't worry about the fact you can't read or write. We will do the automated writing for you. And we will download for you the pecking order of the gods in your heavens. So it was a, it was a strange idea that these three angels came to Hesiod back at the ancient Grecian Empire and said to him, you know, we want to tell you about the, the gods that are over this earth. And we want you to write it so other people can read it. And he said, I'm, I'm illiterate and I can't write. So they they did the writing for him. And so it was called uh, channeling. We still have the same kind of thing happening today where spirits will overshadow uh, a person and talk through them. So anyway, they said, then they went on to tell him that the God over our particular solar system in the Milky Way, the Milky Way galaxy we're part of, and I do mean a small, tiny part of, but we're part of the Milky Way galaxy. And the muses, the angels told Hesiod that in our galaxy, uh, in the galaxy, we have something called our, our solar, solar system. And there is a god who has been appointed to be over our solar system. And he is the God over all human life and on the earth. So when you hear humans talking about God, the muses said that God's name is Zeus. Z-E-U-S. Zeus. And Zeus is the God of the earth. And he is the one that has created mankind and has the full dominion over the earth and all life on it. And so... Later, we find out uh, from the angels that Zeus lives uh, 
on a floating city. They called it a floating city in the universe, uh, and just outside of our solar system, that Zeus, our god, uh, lives in a floating city in the constellation, in a star constellation of Cassiopeia. So there we have our God over the earth, according to the Theogony of Hesiod, our God is Zeus, and he lives in a floating city, and and it's in a section of the star system called Cassiopeia. Very interesting. The muses went on to tell Hesiod that if Zeus were to drop an anvil from his front porch and drop it down to the earth, if Zeus were to drop an anvil, it would take nine days and nine nights and so many hours for it to hit the earth. Well, it's fairly easy to calculate that distance at which an anvil would fall. So multiply that by nine days and nine nights and so many hours. And so it was easy to calculate the distance to a little over three million miles from Earth. And so according to Hesiod and the three muses or the three angels, Zeus lives a little over three million miles from the Earth in a star system called Cassiopeia, And Zeus is our father who art in heaven because he's up there in heaven. A little over three million miles up there. And so our father who art in heaven is Zeus. And hallowed be thy name, Zeus. And of course, in the, so that's the name of that tomb. So now back in 1930, there was an American astronomer named Carl Jansky, K-A-R-L Jansky, J-A-N-S-K-Y. An American astronomer named Carl Jansky, 1930. Carl Jansky built the first radio telescope, and he won the Nobel Prize and was called the father of modern radio telescopes. He then... Carl Jansky also then built a radio transmitter to beam signals out into the heavens. And in the 1930s, just to see what might happen, I'm assuming that he had read uh, the Theogony of Hesiod. So Carl Jansky, out in the 1930s with his new radio transmitter, he transmitted a signal to Cassiopeia, just for the hell of it sent out a strong signal to Cassiopeia. They said it was about 14, 14.3 mega megacycle. And if you can believe it, he got back an intelligent signal that was amplified, but he didn't know what it meant or who sent it. But Carl Jensky sent out a, a message to Cassiopeia, and he got back an intelligent signal. And he said it was amplified, crystal clear, but he did not know how to read it or or who sent it or what it said, but it was intelligent signal. And so incidentally, when Carl Jensky died, all of his notes were immediately taken from his office by, quote, men wearing black suits, men in black. I don't know know what that tells you. (laughs) Now, in the mid-1940s, a Scottish astronomer named Duncan Luan, Lunan, D-U-N-C-A-N, Duncan Lunan, L-U-N-A-N. He was working with Carl Jensky's radio telescope and transmitter, 1940s Scottish astronomer. And he, too, decided to send out a signal aimed at Cassiopeia just to see what would happen. And he, too, got back a signal about 20 seconds later, both intelligently and uh, both intelligent and amplified. And he didn't know what to make of it either. He couldn't understand it, but it was highly intelligent and it was amplified, crystal clear, intelligent answer. He just didn't know what the answer was. But Duncan Lunhan 
uh, narrowed the signal down to a particular light, a particular star in Cassiopeia, which today is called the Lunan object. You look it up in the dictionary, L-U-N-A-N, object, the Lunan object. And, and it was, uh, the signal was coming from a particular star, a particular point of light in the Cassiopeia constellation. And that particular little piece of light, that little dot of light, we call the Lunan, what is it, the Lunan, uh, wait a minute, there's so much document here. Object. It's called the Lunan object. Okay. Now, you can go in an encyclopedia and read about the Lunan object. Now, the word for God in Greek, the ancient Greek word for God is Theos, T-H-E-O-S. And so the chief Theos of God, the chief God of our, in our area of the universe was called Zeus. And therefore he was God the father of all the other gods that we know. So in the ancient Greeks in prayer, it would be our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Zeus. Zeus in the Middle East was very, very prominent as a god for many centuries. In the Middle East, they have a canal named after Zeus. It's called the Suez Canal. Suez is Zeus spelled backwards. So the Suez Canal was in honor of Zeus, the god of this world, the god of our earth. Now let's look for a moment quickly at the word father. In the ancient Sanskrit language, father is Peter, P-I-T-A-R. Not Peter, P-E-T-E-R, no, Peter, P-I-T-A-R. In the old Persian world, the word father is pitta also, P-I-T-A. Uh, Sanskrit was P-I-T-A-R, but in old, uh, the old Persian is P-I-T-A. While in the Greek and Latin, father is pater, P-A-T-E-R. Now you have pitta, pater. You've probably heard that term, well, pitta and pater is the father. In Sanskrit, in Persian, and in Greek and Latin, the father is pater, P-A-T-E-R. So the ancient word for God was the pater pater. Again, in ancient Greek, the father god named Zeus was referred to as Zeus pater, the father god. Zeus pater, or God the father, in the Latin, God the father was Zeus, but today, uh, and it, it, we don't spell Zeus, Z-E-U-S. It's spelled D-E-U-S, Dios. And so Dios is God today in Latin. Dios, no, Z-E-U-S, Zeus. And so in the ancient Rome, the God or Zeus was called I-U hyphen Peter, P-E-T-E-R. I-U and then Peter which is Zeus in the Roman religion. I's are interchangeable with J. So Zeus, or I-U hyphen Peter, becomes J-U hyphen Peter, or Jupiter. So Jupiter is I-U Peter. So while we're on the subject, the Greek Zeus became the Roman Jupiter, the Romans uh, took the, Jew the Greek Zeus and turned his name into Jupiter, Iupeter. And another name for Jupiter was Jove, J-O-V-E, Jove. And that's in the Bible. So when you hear someone say that God is love, L-O-V-E, I've heard that for many years and I thought, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense that God is love. No, it's not God is love, L-O-V-E. It's God is Jove, J-O-V-E. J's and L's are interchangeable. So now we understand God is Jove, Jupiter, or Zeus, Pater. 
So, in the ancient world, it was believed that the god Zeus protected the royalty. He was said to be the Zeus, the god over the chosen, the royalty. So, Zeus, the god, chooses who is to be royal, and he will protect the royalty. And they were then, well, then we today say that they rule, the royalty rule, by divine right. And so today we have the kings who will tell you they ruled uh, the empires by divine right. What do you mean divine right? Well, it means that the Pope, the Roman Catholic Pope papacy, overshadows all business and religion in the world today, period. And so the Pope appoints you and allows you to be a prince or a king or whatever, if he allows it, then you have a divine right because he represents Zeus, Pater, or Jew, Pater. And one last thing, God in Latin is Dios, D-E-U-S. And Dios in the old Persian is Diva, D-A-I-V-A, which means evil or demonic God. So by a dictionary definition, that means that Christianity worldwide is worshiping an ancient demonic god. Of course, that might explain some of the history and the bloodshed and human slavery over the last thousands of years.